So we got our Nomad course out for beginners. We've now moved everybody who wants to uh, through that course. There's, there's several hundred people are taking the course right now, which is amazing. And hopefully anyone who's moved through that course stays with me in this channel. And we can start moving up to intermediate level now, which means different types of modeling and different projects. So these projects are gonna be just me working through a particular project that I would do in my, my daily work life. So this one's just how to quickly do a speed sculpt of an alien creature. I called it the black tear um, and you'll see why as I paint it. So time to do more project based uh, videos now. So we've we've got um, we've got to a point now with this channel where we've kind of helped new users get into iPad sculpting. We've now put out a course, so I've got somewhere to refer people if they want to go and learn this from the ground up with no experience whatsoever. So now it's time to spend a few weeks and possibly months focusing on higher level stuff. So this video is really all about how I would approach a very quick character or creature concept. Um, so we're going to go up a notch now. Um, this one's only a time lapse, but I will start breaking these down and I'm going to do a couple of longer courses, several hour courses to match the, the beginner's course about this kind of work for anyone who, who's who's interested in that. So when I'm designing, uh, for any reason really, whether it be for um, advertising, TV, film, anything at all, if I've got an open reign, if, I've, if I can make whatever I want and there isn't a hard and fast concept already defined, then this is the kind of process I use. So I'm not using reference here. I've got an idea of the kind of creature I want to do. So it's kind of a little bit goat-like, um, obviously very alien, um, but I didn't have a defined brief. I didn't have anything in my mind that said it has to be um, this particular thing. So th th this is what I'd call spitballing. So I I'm literally just taking the, the shapes and I'm seeing what I get um, using the tools that we've been teaching for quite some time now um, and just taking a basic primitive and just mushing it into whatever my, my kind of hands and my brain kind of decide. Now, it for you, if you're fairly new at this and you're just at the point where you're starting to explore sculpts, speed sculpts we'd call them, like this, then then I would say that you should be really pulling off reference. So go and get the um, get yourself a set of references of the type of creature that you're, you're looking at. So if it's going to be like this kind of, um, I mean, I say goatee, it could easily be like bovine, like a cow or something like that. And just get that reference on your other screen or on your iPhone or your phone or whatever it is that you, you have at hand or even a book. You know, I'm, you know, we're, we're not so far gone that we don't use books anymore. Um, so so go and get the reference and work to a reference, even for your fantasy creatures. So even if you're going to be doing minotaurs or you're going to be doing dragons or uh, anything that's this, you know, something that doesn't exist in our world, then base it firmly in reality. Find find something in that creature that, that links it to reality. So if it's a minotaur, then you've got a bull's head. If it's a dragon, you can use reptilian reference. And that, that's what the people who do this for a living do is that, you know, they're generally the stuff that works even with things like dragons, they link it to a reality with, with the muscles and the, the, you know, the size of the wings should be able to support the body. And what I'm doing here is, is I'm, just, I'm just making it around human anatomy that's gone a little bit towards uh, another creature. So the anatomy is not brilliant on this one. I wasn't really focusing. I was, I was quite relaxed when I was doing it. Um, what you will notice and what I've, I've, I've noticed a lot with, with people who have been joining me in the last few weeks is that when you're new at this, what you tend to use is the, is kind of like the clay brush or the, or the brush and just do blobby building up. Just make sure that you're using things like the flatten tool and even the flatten tool with an alpha, which gives you the, the roughened surface. Um, in the body, when, you, when you're sculpting muscles, there are lots and lots of flat planes and flat areas. So don't be afraid to, to, to flatten off an area to give you, a, even like the top of the eyebrow here, you can see where I've flattened it. And it's almost like if this was clay or wax or something like that, I would have been flattening it with my thumb. So those things like the clay brush are great for the muscles and the striations and building up the muscles, but f you use things like the flatten tool. 
put separate eyes in. I, I just popped two spheres in here, and just for the time being, I did. Um, I just painted on some specular highlights just to just to give me, um, uh, you know, a good, you know, to bring the the creature to life. Life really. I didn't like it, so I get, I get rid of it in a minute. But it, it, it helped me just get going with those eyes and something that I realized that I didn't teach in my recent course was how to split your materials in for, for a character in, in different ways so to have one mat cap on the eye and one mat cap on the body so I'm going to add that in as a, as a separate lesson um, in in that course but but su suffice it to say you can have different mat caps on different um, parts of the model so look up in the um, basically up in the shader area and you'll see you'll see what I mean there. So I'm now basically just laying down different layers of colours. So this is vertex painting. We've covered this quite a few times and I'm just picking like colours around a range of so I've gone with like reds and greens here. Um, and I'm I'm just trying to kind of lay down some basic colours. So I think I call this one the black tear. Um, and that's because he's gonna have lots of black coming out of the, the corners of his eyes. Um, so I was laying down a really nice dark green there in the in the nostril and in the eye cavity, uh, and everywhere else. M most often, creatures will be darker on the top uh, and light underneath, especially things like fish and reptiles. If you notice, they they're darker on the top because when when predators are looking down on them, it's usually against a darker su surface. And when a predator's looking up at a fish, for example. It sees a lot of, um, you know, the light underbelly is there because you've got light behind it, and a light underbelly makes you a little bit safer. So, if you've got dark underneath, like I have here, that you know, there's no, there's not that many precedents in in nature. You'll find less than you than, than you will find the other way. Obviously, in domestic animals where we've bred them, and you know, and, and creatures, there's always the odd creature that's going to break the rule. Um, but, but generally, you would do darker on the top and lighter underneath unless you want to break that rule. And, that, and that's what I'm doing here is I'm taking a, a generalized rule and I'm, and I'm trying something else. Um, so it could be that there's a particular type of fur or it's a bird that's got a certain kind of feather there. So there are tons and tons of uh, you know reasons why that rule wouldn't apply. Now, I've broken the symmetry there. Very, very crucial in this kind of modeling. And what I've done is I've just I've just literally taken symmetry off, as you can see on the right hand side, and I've just used the move tool, and I'm just moving that body around just to give it a little bit of broken symmetry, so it looks like it's turned its head to the left, um, uh, just just a tiny tiny bit to all to the right. Um, and now I'm just building up the muscles and bringing the eyebrows up. And here we go with the black tears, as, as I mentioned. So um, so from his nostrils, and I don't, I don't know why, but that was the design I was coming up with in the very early part of, of this. And that gives me a really striking look in his face. Um, what I did there was I changed, in the camera panel up at the top, I just changed the field of view a little bit. And it, it, you can go all the way from orthographic to perspective just on a slider. So it can just help you frame your, your creature a little bit more. And, and these things are about an hour worth of sculpting um, uh, 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 and painting, really. So it's probably 50-50 painting and sculpting. Um, and I'm not in any way trying to do anything. You know, I'm not thinking about this going any further than, than just this exercise. But if I come up with a nice creature, sometimes it, it, it goes on to the next level. Now, what I've done there is I've taken, I'm using different materials, so both uh, mat caps and PBR and I'm just trying to get different lighting scenarios and what I've done is I've just grabbed a screen of each of those different lighting scenarios and then what I do is I made a massive mistake here because rather than use a, an export where we just cut it cut it out and do a transparent background I actually screenshot it with all of the interface in so don't do what I've done here and um, this was just lackadaisical laziness on my part but I wanted to do this as a painting, which you, you know, you've seen me do a lot. So I'm, I'm really doing a paint over. So I put all those layers into Procreate and then I just start using um, different tools in Procreate to paint it up, to, to either remove one layer to give me the lighting underneath or add it onto another layer. And, and then I add things like hair and fur and, and stuff like that. So don't forget we've got the Nomad course out now that's available and you can download it from the link here or down below. Um, the course is for beginners and it teaches everything that I've been talking about for the last five months about Nomad and all of the different ways that you can learn to um, get to grips with this sculpting software, even if it's your very first time. 
Now we've got lots of new courses and lots of new videos in in the pipeline, uh, but with with iPad sculpting, I'm going to focus next on two areas. I'm going to focus on 3D printing, and I'm also going to focus on anatomy. And hopefully, as you can see here, I'm going to start with the human skull and start teaching you a bit about how I learned how to um, create anatomy and then translate that into using it and, and creating it on an iPad. So hopefully you'll join me in the next few months as I build this channel and, and start spreading some of this knowledge that I've been lucky enough to be able to get from, from some amazing artists and, and, and teachers over the years. Um, I hope you're enjoying the channel. Please subscribe because it does help us get it in front of other artists and like a video if it's something that, that's, that's working for you. And don't forget, hit the notification bell so I can let you know when we're dropping more of these. And even though this one isn't, they're normally on a Wednesday and a Friday.